Ayan, nakikita na po ba yung aking screen? This will be up, updates and legal ethics. No? But prior to that, I always tell my audience and my students that we lawyers are the most prayerful of all the professionals. Why? In all pleadings we submit, there is always a prayer. Here is a prayer written by a lawyer himself who later on became a saint. Yan po si Thomas More. Yun nung nasa taas, hindi yun nasa baba. Okay? Sabi niya, Lord, grant that I may be able in argument, accurate in analysis, strict in study, candid with clients, and honest with adversaries. Yan o yata ay nakakalimutan ng marami. No? Lawyers or not, we have to be honest. Kaya lang, sabi ni Billy Joel as early as 1979, honesty is such a lonely word. Talaga nga namang malungkot. Ano po? <laughs> Everyone is so untrue. Eh, wala na daw kasing tapat ngayon. Tanghalit na lang ang tapat. Ha? Ayan. Sabi nga, para sa mga relasyon daw yan, eh, pag, uh, parang Bluetooth device. Pagkasama mo, connected. Pero pag tumalikod ka, searching for other devices na. At nakikikonek sa lahat ng Wi-Fi. Naku, delikado yun. Baka mabirus. <laughs> pag makikonek ko saan sa ang Wi-Fi, ha? Okay. So, sit with me at my desk and listen with me to my client's planes. Read with me in my library and stand beside me in court so that today, I shall not, in order to win a point, lose my soul. That is if you believe you have won. Because if you don't, that is immaterial. But if you believe, as it was written in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36, hindi po ito fellowship, ha? ito po ay MCLE. <laughs> For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what would the man give in exchange for his soul? Tama nga naman. But if you believe, you have a soul. Now, uh, Oscar Wilde, an Irish writer, ito ang kauna-unahang umamin yata na siya ay member ng LGBT community when it was dangerous to do that. Huh? Sabi niya, when I was young, I thought that money was the most important thing in life. Ganda, no po? But now that I am old, I know that it is. Ayos na sana, eh. No? Sabi naman niya, ito naman si Margaret Thatcher, sabi niya, it's not a creation of wealth that is wrong. Eh, what is wrong? The love of money for its own sake. O si Jinky, ah, may problema, ano? Eh, siya yung love of money. And then, then, then joke lang ho yan. Okay? So, probably she took that from the wordings of Paul in his first letter to Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. Ala, eh, si Jinky talaga. Ay, hindi ho. Ha? Hmm. Kaya, alam niyo, no nagkaroon ng mga lockdown, buti nga malaya na tayo ngayon. Although, pwede na yung ganitong MCLE. Yeah? Kasi, that's one of the things that I missed. Yung mag-lecture mag sa MCLE, visiting different provinces. Like now, dapat nasa lawag tayo ngayon. Ah, hindi, vegan pala. No? Ilocosur nga pala ito. <laughs> okay? So, naka-lockdown. Hindi pa inilalabas ng Korte Suprema yung guidelines on video conferencing hearings. Naisip ko, mas madaling umaman yung preacher kaya sa lawyer. Kaya naisip ko magtayo ng relihiyon. Ayan, tatawagin natin sa aksin ni Duka. Pag gusto yung sumali, may Google Form tayo mamaya. We fill up. <laughs> At ituturo natin dito sa mana ng palataya. Do not love your money. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. So what would you do with the money that you have? Give them to me and let me love them for you. So wala kayong problema. <laughs> At don't worry, wala ko tayong love offering mamaya. Ha? Hmm. Pagka tumingin daw kayo dyan uh, at gumagalaw, the one looking at it is under stress. Well, lawyering, arguably, is one of the most stressful professions in the world. Ano? Pag di naman gumagalaw, eh, di wala kayong stress. Totoo ba talaga na stressful ang lawyering? Ano nagdadagdag? Ang nagdadagdag daw sa stress ay yung another woman. Kasi ang tawag daw mistress, my stress. Ay totoo ba yun? Well, I have no personal knowledge. <laughs> okay. Eh, justification daw, sabi ni Joseph Story, a former justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, sabi niya, the law is a jealous mistress and requires a law and constant courtship. Eh, ba't na, di-dispar yung mga may mistress? Eh, nasabi ni Joseph Story. <laughs> the historia lang yan. Okay. So, one exercise that I would like you to do, ay to, tingnan nyo yung ilong ng babaeng yan. There's a dot in the nose of that woman. You look at that for five seconds lang. And then you transfer your glance at the white portion of your screen. Okay? Don't worry, hindi ko nakatakot yan. So I just would like you to do that exercise para hindi kayo mabore, no? So nakita nyo? 
Okay. So, yun yung mga panahon namin, ano, na eh, hindi pa uso yung cellphone with camera kasi ngayon, napakadali na yung cellphone, may camera eh. Dati, yung camera separate, malaking device, ano, tapos lalagyan pa ng film, tsaka pa lang isushoot, at tsaka madidevelop. Ayan. So, ano naman kinala, ano naman ibig sabihin nito? Well, wala lang. Lahat ba talaga kailangan may ibig sabihin? Pwede naman wala, di ba? <laughs> anyway, sometimes things are not what they appear to be. Di ba? Kaya huwag masyadong judgmental. Everything deserves a second look. Yung bang kala mo, kayo na. Pero wala pa lang kayo. Ha? At assuming ka lang. Kaya nasasaktan. Ayan. Kala mo, ginose kayong pala, hindi naman. Okay? So, <laughs> anong ibig sabihin yan? Eh, nauso daw yung LDR, long distance relationship. Ano ba yun? Yan daw yung gustong-gustong-gusto mo siya. Pero ang layo na magkagusto siya sa'yo. Okay? Yan daw yung long distance relationship. Anyway, so pinag-uusapan natin ay ethics. no? Ethics, It's derived from the word ethicos, Greek word ho ito, na relating to one's character. Na ang root word naman daw ay ethos. Of course, alam ko, alam nyo yun na yan eh. Ha? Character. Now, legal uh, ethics seeks to resolve questions of human morality by defining concepts like good and evil, right and wrong, virtue and vice, justice and crime. And we are all familiar with these concepts. Okay? Now, We base our decisions on what is moral and what is not. Morality is derived from the Latin word moralistas, meaning manner, character, proper behavior, or a body of standards or principles. Derived from a code of conduct. That's why meron na tayong pag-uusapan mamaya na code of professional responsibility and accountability. And these are universal standards for lawyers in the country. But basically, according to St. Thomas' uh, philosophy of natural law, the first rule of morality is to do what is good, avoid what is evil. Ganun ka simple. Do what is good, avoid what is evil. Buti na lang, hindi lahat ng tao ginagawa yan. Ano? <laughs> Otherwise, wala tayong trabaho. <laughs> okay, ganun ka simple. But sad to say, not all people are doing that. And Another question is, what is your standard of morality? Kasi nagbabago po yung standard of morality from culture to culture, di ba? Now, ethics is important. Why? These are the basis for the rules of the profession. And without ethical yardstick, it is impossible to set the standards that regulate the exercise of a profession and distinguish it from amateurism and quackery. So, how do you distinguish a quack doctor from the real doctor? Yung real doctor ay merong ethical principles. Di ba? Hmm. Kaya lang, sa atin ho, kapag ka, pag ka nagkakaroon ng problema ang mga dokumento, ang, tina, ang tawag o dinoktor, nakita na ba kayo ng dokumentong inabogado? Parang wala naman, di ba? Pero ang daming mga dokumento, dinoktor. O, sino may problema? Abogado o doktor? <laughs> eh, kaya ngayon, wala na tayong excuse kasi juris doctor na tayo. O, eh, doctor na rin pala tayo. Ayan. Okay. So, legal ethics naman, according to Chief Justice Manuel Moran, I hope you can still recall him, remember him, in his foreword dun sa legal ethics book ni Justice George Malcolm, sabi niya, it is the embodiment of all the principles of morality and refinement that should govern the conduct of every member of the bar. So if you are a member of the bar, you are governed by legal ethics. And it is a branch of moral science that treats of the duties which an attorney like us owes to the court, to his client, to his colleagues in the profession, and to the public. Alam na alam natin yan, di ba? Saan ba natin matatagpuan ng sor ang legal ethics? In the Constitution itself. Okay? In the rules of court. The Code of Professional Responsibility and I add accountability. Si Pra na po, sabi ni Chief Justice. May nakausap ako isang uh, dating bar examiner, sabi niya, Copra. <laughs> Parang nyog ang dating. Ano. Isa pa, ito to naman. Code of Professional Responsibility and Accountability. Edi, Copra. <laughs> Pero nung pinahayag ito ni Chief Justice, si Pra ang tawag niya. Edi, sundin natin si Chief Justice. <laughs> From jurisprudence, moral laws, and special laws. Di ba? So, ang tanong, how can we be covered by this? We have to be lawyers. Now, who is a lawyer? According to Black's Law Dictionary, a lawyer is a person learned in the law. As an attorney, counselor, or solicitor. 
Kaya pala nangihingi ng pera yung iba. No? Solicitor. <laughs> And then the joke lang. No? <laughs> Ayan. Or a person who is practicing law. A person who for fee or reward. Naku, hindi matutuhan Supreme Court yan. Kasi sabi ng Korte Suprema, lawyering is not a money-making venture. Lawyers are not merchants. Diba? Law advocacy is not a capital that yields profits. Bihira, ang hirap maging abogado. Tapos hindi ka naman pala mag- makikinabang. <laughs> Anyari. Okay. Prosecutes or defense causes in courts of record or other judicial tribunals. Whose business it is to give legal advice in relation to any cause or matter or whatever. So yan po ang definition ni Campbell Black uh, in his Black's Law Dictionary ng lawyer. Now what do we mean by we'll say practice of law? Well, sikat na sikat to as early as 1991 yung Caetano versus Munso, di ba? But that was derived from an even older case of Philippine Lawyers Association versus Agrava. No? 1959, before you and I were born. Okay? Eh, kapag ka nasa PhD classroom tayo, hindi natatanggapin yan. Kasi sa PhD classroom, five years lang ang references. Eh, sa atin, regardless of the year it was decided, for as long as there is no new decision reversing or modifying it, we still adhere to that. Di ba? Yan minsan nag-aaway yung JD at saka PhD. <laughs> okay? So, The practice of law covers any activity in or out of court. Like what we are doing right now, this practice of law, di ba? Which requires the application of law, legal principles, practice or procedure, and calls for legal knowledge, training, and experience. Kaya nga, iba, mas gusto yung may experience na sa litigation. Di ba? Kasi nagdadagdag ng... Ano ba tawag nila sa Tagalog? Gulang. <laughs> gulang ba? <laughs> yung experience. Okay. Iba kasi wala pang anak, magulang. <laughs> Di ba? Alam ko magulang, parents. Hindi sa Tagalog, pag magulang, walang anak, okay na. Magulang na talaga eh. Hmm. Sabi ng isang American lawyer, itong si Stephen Kiva, in his book, Transforming Practices, Law is one of the great healing professions. Bakit? Eh maraming hinihiling sa kliyente. Masama ho yan, masama yan. Ha? While uh, medicine heals the body, the clergy heals the soul. The law heals societal rips. That's why a lawyer who steers up quarrel and promotes litigation might be liable for baratry. Diba? Isa hong offense ito against our profession. Kasi dapat pinagkakasundo natin rather than um, claiming the fire. Diba? Ayan. So in the case of resurrection verse attorney Saison, law is a noble profession. Hallelujah. Pero wala tayong Lawyer's Day. May Teacher's Day, October 5. May Mother's Day, Father's Day. Pero walang Lawyer's Day. Eh bakit na? Noble profession tayo eh. Kung magkakaroon ng Lawyer's Day, ang suggestion ko ay November 1. Bakit ang November 1? Eh kasi All Saints Day. ba? Diba? Araw ng mga banal. Eh pagkaginawa natin yung nakalagay sa CPRA, Baka nauna pa tayong nakanonize kay St. Pedro Kalungsod. Eh. <laughs> Kaso iba hindi ginagawa. Ano po? Ayan. Oh. Di ba? It is only bestowed to those individuals who are competent intellectually, academically. Presumption na yan. Eh. And more importantly, important, morally. Di ba? Mas mahalaga yung moral qualification, moral competence according to the court. Now, we have... Uh, brothers and sisters in the profession who are spousing advocacies no? na isinusulong nila ang isang advocacy for the betterment of the society. But be careful according to the court. Eh? Lawyers, especially those who engage in public interest litigation, should always be mindful that their acts and omissions before the courts do not only affect themselves. Hindi lang silang apektado dito. Bakit? May isinusulong silang advocacy eh. By trusting themselves into the limelight to take up the cudgels on behalf of a minority class, public interest lawyers represent the hopes and aspirations of a greater mass of people, not always with the consent of all the members of that class. Ano ba kasi ang issue dito? Nag-file ng petition ang mga kasamahan natin sa profesyon para i-deklarang unconstitutional yung Article 1 ng Family Code. 
Alam ko, alam ninyo yan, di ba? Ano yun? That marriage is a special contract of permanent union. Abay, agree sana ako sa kanila kasi bakit naman permanent union? Di ba? So, ito yung longest sentence. Marriage. Why? Lifetime imprisonment. <laughs> Na-joke lang ako. <laughs> di ba? Alam ko ho yan kasi ako, I got married at a very late age of 23 years old. So, 30 years na ho akong kasal. Sabi ko sa wife ko, nasaan na yung ating marriage contract nung 30th anniversary namin last year? Sabi niya, bakit? Eh, titignan ko lang kung may expiration date. At pag meron nung gagawin mo, ay eh, paparin yun natin. <laughs> Mahirap po makipag-away sa misis. <laughs> Pagkipag-away sa iyong spouse ay eh, para daw pagtaya sa loto. Ang hirap manalo. Okay. <laughs> Manalo ka man, talo ka pa rin, I'm, I'm telling you. Okay, so gusto nila ipadiklarang unconstitutional yung Article 1. That marriage special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman. Kasi ang gusto nila, tanggalin yung man and a woman to allow same-sex marriage. So nagkaroon ng oral argument sa Supreme Court. Eh, eh nasa it in contempo itong mga petitioners or lawyers at pinagalitan ni Justice Leonin. Number one, hindi sila ready during the pre-trial conference. Tapos, nag appear sa korte, hindi well-dressed. Aba, yun nagalit si Justice Leonin. Di ba? O yan. So, ito ang sinasabi ng Korte Suprema. Their errors and mistakes. Their negligence and liturgy have a ripple effect. Even on persons who have no opportunity to consent to the strategies and tactics employed by ill-prepared And so, pumori councils. Hala. <laughs> diba? Eh, kasi nga naman, yung mga nare-represent nila, hindi lahat yun eh. Nagbigay ng consent. Pero whatever happens, apektado yung sektor na ito. That's why, they have to be prepared. Be ready. Para kung yung mga professor natin na nagagalit uh, kapag ka pinag-resay tayo at hindi tayo makapag-resangit. Diba? Ay, kasi mga studyante ko sa College of Law, If you come to my class, you have to be ready. Hindi ka tulad ng college classroom. Na pagpasok mo, tuturo ka ng teacher. Dito tatanungin ka ng professor. Okay? At naiinis ako doon sa mga estudyante na ang tawag sa professor nila ay attorney. So because you're not my client, don't call me attorney. Huh? You call me sir because it is not a client-lawyer relationship. It is professor-student relationship. Outside my classroom, you can call me anything you want to call me. But please, just don't call me baby unless you mean it. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> In the case of Indaya versus Attorney Oka, it bears stressing that much is demanded from those who engage in the practice of law. Why? Because they have a duty not only to their clients, but also to the court, to the bar, and to the public. Napakarami ho nating duty. Bakit ganun? Ang sabi sa ibang elin, ay bang hindi ho nang pisan lukas. Ang kabanata ay labing dalawa, ang talata ay apat na putwalo. Basa. Wala yung taga-basa ko. Ako nalang. From everyone who has been in, given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Ano ba? First century writing pa yan. Naluma na yan. Eh di baguhin natin. Sabi ni Uncle Ben kay, kay Peter Parker. Eh? With great power comes great responsibility. Eh bakit? Eh ang dami natin nagagawa, di ba? Pagka lawyer, kaya nga gusto. Ilan no ang uh, libo-libo every year ang gusto maging abogado. Kaya ngayon ang dahilan, bakit yung legal education board ginawang JD? Kasi daw, yung LLB, paglabas na resulta ng bar, libo-libo bagsak. Ay totoo naman, thousands talaga magbabagsak. Right now, di ba? 43.47. So gawin na nating 44. 56% ang bumagsak. Hmm. Marami talaga ang bumabagsak. Okay? Now, if you become a law professor, exempted kayo sa MCLE. <laughs> okay. Pero malaki ang obligasyon. Respondents, responsibilities, and expectations are even more heightened because he is a law professor. L-A-W po, and the L-O-W. He should be a beacon of righteous and conscientious conduct. However, respondent as a molder of minds of soon to be lawyers should guide his students to behave and act in a manner consistent with the lofty standards of the legal profession. Why? Instead, he abused his student, his positions of authority, creating an offensive and uncomfortable atmosphere in school. Again, what should be a place of learning and growth? 
had become a place of fear and distrust for the affected students. Ano bang issue dito para mag-guide natin yung mga kapareho natin nagtuturo sa law school? Wala akong problema kung maging stricto kayo at mabansagang kayong terror. Ang may problema pag hinaharas ni professor yung mga estudyante niya sexually. Ito po ay isang professor sa isang law school. Hindi ko nababanggitin yung kagayan de oro. Ano po? <laughs> may law school dyan. Nagtuturo ito si professor. Every time na magpaparisite siya, naharas yung mga estudyante sexually. Alam nyo, napakahigpit ito ngayon ng anti-sexual harassment law at saka yung Safe Spaces Act. Ha? Alam natin pare-pare yan. Republic Act 11313. Okay? In one recitation session na kinokote ng Supreme Court sa desisyon na ito, uh, nagtanong si Professor, ang sabi ng estudyante, Sir, please come again. Ang sagot ni Professor, What? You want me to come again? Do you know how long it will take for me to come? And you want me to come again right now? <laughs> and several others, ano po? na kinote ng Korte Suprema. At may mga nagreklamo na estudyante na gusto silang i-date ni Professor Tinitex para makipag-date. Siguro, guwaping si Professor. So, natatakot sila. That's why they filed an anonymous complaint. Pero may mga attachments. And the Supreme Court took cognizance of the case. And after due process, the professor was suspended from the practice of law for five years and prevented from teaching in any school, hindi lamang law school, ha? any school, for 10 years. Kaya mag-ingat po, ha? mas madaling mag-ingat kaysa magsisi. Hmm. Yan ang sinasabi ko sa mga estudyante ko sa legal ethics. Dalawa lang ang kinakadisbar, kinakasuspindi ng mga abogado. Ano yon? Pareho nagsisimula sa letter P. Yung isa pera. Yung isa, puri. <laughs> so pera o puri lang yan. Eh? Yan nagbibigay ako sa kanilang list of cases, identify nyo ano yung cost ng disbarment or suspension. And you will find out. Halagang dalawa lang. Okay? Now, paano ba maging abogado? We have to remember that under the Constitution, Article 14, Section 5, Paragraph 3, every citizen has a right to select a profession or course of study. Subject, of course, to fair, reasonable, and equitable admission academic requirements. Hindi naman lahat gusto maging abogado. Ano po? Iilan lang naman talaga eh. Mula pagkabata, gusto maging lawyer. Ako, mula pagkabata, dalawa lang ang profesyon na gusto ko. Maging pari. Ha? Kasi hangang-hanga ako doon sa pari, doon sa lugar namin, sa Camarines World. Every Sunday, nagsisimba kami ng nanay ko. Natutuwa ako kasi pag sinabi ng pari, natayo, lahat tumatayo. Sabi niya, upo, lahat tumuupo. Pero ang pinakapaborito ko, yung may nagiikot ng supot, tapos may nagbibigay ng pera. Sabi ko sa nanay ko, kanina pupunta yung pera sa pari daw. Ay, gusto ko yan. <laughs> okay. Pero gusto ko rin maging lawyer. Eh? Hmm. eh, kundi sana ako naging pari at hindi naging abogado, gusto ko doctor of medicine. May kaibigan akong doktor. Sabi niya, attorney ko, magdo-doctor of medicine ka, magpakadalubasa ka doon sa field ng obstetrician and gynecology. Obstetrics and gynecology. Sabi ko, bakit? Eh, sabi niya, kasi kumikita ka na. May nakikita ka pa. <laughs> Ay ko, pambihira naman ito si doktor. Mali naman yata yan. <laughs> yan ang sabi niya. Yan ang advice niya. Eh. Huwag niyo masyado paniwalaan. Hmm. Eh, pwede ho ba ito na pagka gusto maging abogado, magiging abogado agad? Ay, hindi po. Ang sabi ng Korte Suprema in that case of Dex versus San Diego, naalala niyo pa yung Dex, ano? Department of Error, Corruption and Scandal. Ay, sorry, sorry. Education, Culture and Sports pala. Naalala ko lang yung laptop. <laughs> okay. Ngayon po, ay dep ed. Huh? Okay. So, Dex versus San Diego, sabi ng Korte Suprema, speaking through Justice Sagani Cruz, a person cannot insist on being a physician if he will be a menace to his patients. If one who wants to be a lawyer may prove better as a plumber, he should be so advised and advised. Of course, he may not be forced to be a plumber, but on the other hand, he may not force his entry into the bar. Isa pwede ang pilitin maging tubero, pero siya magpumilit na maging abogado. Diba? Pero pag abogado eh, why? We cannot have a society of square pegs and round holes. A dentist should never left the farm. Of engineers who should have studied banking and teachers who could be better as merchants. Eh, grabe naman. Di ba? <laughs> eh, at that time ako kasi yung mga teacher, kung ano-ano binibenta sa classroom, dahil mali ito ang sweldo ng teacher, 1989. 3,100 to na, alala ko yan kasi 1990, I graduated from the College of Education. Ayoko magturo sa public school kasi 3,000 lang ang sweldo eh. Eh, luckily, I was uh, hired as an instructor dun sa college. 
eh ang sweldo, yun nga lang, bubunoy mo 45 units. Ang sinesweldo ko na ho nun, 12,000. Eh di, ang laking kaibahan. Di ba? So kaya yung teachers na pipilita na maghanap ng extra income. Eh ngayon, hindi na ho. Online na ho ang bentahan ngayon. Ha? So how are we admitted into the practice of law? Of course, by the Supreme Court. It is mandated by the Constitution under Article 8, Section 5, Paragraph 5 that the court shall have the power to admit candidates to the practice of law. Okay? So no other. But under Republic Act 7662, the Legal Education Board was created. And among its powers is to regulate eh, law schools in the country, including admission to law schools. That's why acting on its powers, uh, Legal Education Board issued led Memorandum Order Number no. 7, Series of 2016, that all those seeking admission to the basic law courses leading to Bachelor of Laws, uh, nagkaroon ng Great Migration, JD na tayo. Eh? Kaya kung kayo ay LLB yung kurso ninyo, katulad ko, pupunta tayo dun sa ating law school where we graduated as the law school to give you a new diploma and new transcript of records reflecting Jewish doctor as your degree. Kasi wala na po tayong LLB. Kaya lang your law school should have the authority coming from the LEB to grant such degree. So tanungin nyo yung law school. Eh? Kayo ba ay nagagrant na ng uh, JD? Kasi magpapakonvert ko ako. Of course, may bayad ko yan. Those who would not pass the PILSAT were not admitted in any law school all over the country. Okay? Pero yung mga bumagsak, went to sawa po. Walang limitasyon as to the number of times they could take the Philippine Law School admission test. Okay? However, there were law schools na nagreklamo. Why? It affected their enrollment. Pagka mga state colleges, universities, okay lang ho yan. Kasi may estudyante ka o wala, tuloy naman ang pondo ng gobyerno dyan. But for private law schools, medyo maliliit, their enrollment suffered. Okay? That's why, kasi oh, bakit nag-suffer? Eh, hindi lahat pwede mag-enroll eh. Only those who passed the PILSAT. And those who made it to the PILSAT, ang priority siyempre yung mga big, bigger law schools. Diba? Kaya, there were professors who filed a petition. Particularly itong si Judge Pimentel, retired RTC judge ng Makati, na nagtuturo sa Arellano at saka sa UST and several other law schools, I think. So, he questioned, they questioned ang mga petitioners yung legality ng PILSAT. Okay? Arguing that it affects the academic freedom of the educational institution. Now, the Supreme Court acting on the petition on September 10, 2019. There was a motion for reconsideration which was denied with finality in 2021. And sabi ng Korte Suprema, the act and practice of the Legal Education Board of excluding restricting and qualifying admissions to law schools in violation of the institutional academic freedom on who to admit by a PILSAT is unconstitutional. Why? According to Article 14, Section 4, Paragraph 2 of the, uh, Section 5, Paragraph 2 of the 1987 Constitution, academic freedom shall be enjoyed by all institutions of higher learning. Higher learning po, ha? Ibig sabihin, colleges, universities. Eh, ang law school, hindi lang higher learning. Kasi mas mataas pa tayo sa college kasi we need a college degree before you enroll in law school. So, the highest learning na tayo. <laughs> okay? Eh, mas mataas sa higher, di ba? Highest? But anyway, ano ang aspeto ng academic freedom of the educational institutions? Number one, to determine who will be admitted to study. Who will be allowed to teach? What courses will be offered and how shall they be taught? So, yung apat na aspeto na academic freedom. Only the school can determine who will be admitted as its students. But when PILSAT was instituted, it restricted the freedom of the educational institution to determine who will be admitted. Kasi yung hindi nakapasa, hindi na ma-admit. So, according to the court, that's unconstitutional. Okay? It impairs the right of the school to determine who will be admitted to study. Now, there was also a Legal Education Board Memorandum requiring all deans of the College of Law to be holders of Master of Law's degree. Eh, teka muna. 
Kala ko ba, Juris Doctor na kami, bakit magmamaster pa? Di ba demotion yun? Mas mataas yung doktor kaysa master. Eh? Kaya may Legal Education Board Memorandum din na for purposes of admission, qualification, compensation, promotion, yung JD is equivalent to PhD. Ako yung nagreklamo ng todo-todo ang uh, Commission on Higher Error, a higher education. Kasi daw, ang JD ay hindi research-based katulad ng PhD. OMG! Sabi ko sa mga sadyante, with all due respect, ha, ako may doctoral degree ako sa education. Uh, PhD. OADD. Ngayon, ang problema natin dyan, in a PhD classroom, madali lang eh. Okay? Ikumpara mo yung PhD classroom sa JD classroom. In a JD classroom, a student suffers on a nightly basis. Sleepless nights, mental anguish, social humiliation, Bismarck's reputation, wounded feelings, and moral shock. And he cannot even show his professors for damages. Di ba? May ganun ba sa PhD classroom? Wala. Sabi ko, with all due respect, kung di ako nag-abugas siya, baka lima ang PhD ko ngayon kung talagang tinuloy-tuloy ko. Okay? So ngayon, those who would be teaching in law school are required to have their LLM also. Either units or degree. But according to the court, again, that infringes on the academic freedom of the educational institution to determine who will be admitted, who will be allowed to teach. That's academic freedom. Diba? Kasi hindi mo na mapagturo yung tao kahit gusto mo siyang pagturuin kung wala siyang LLM. And that infringes on the academic freedom of the educational institution. Okay? Eh, nung ma-institute to ito, Sumulat ka agad ako doon sa chairman. Kilala ko naman yung chairman. Eh, sabi ko, meron naman akong doctoral sa education. Maka pwedeng i-credit ninyo. Hindi naman ho ako sinagot in writing, pero nagkausap kami. Sabi niya, hindi ka naman kasali. Exempted ka na. Because you have been teaching for more than 10 years. So, okay na yun. Eh, sabi ko, gusto ko ng definitive answer. Ay, hindi na nasagot. But anyway, that's smooth and academic dahil Sinabi na nga na hindi na pwedeng i-require ang mga professors na may LLM. At nagalit dito siyempre yung mga nag-o-offer ng sa graduate school of law. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Now, the Supreme Court supervises lawyers based on Section 5, Paragraph 5 of Article 8. And before we are allowed to practice law, we have to recite the lawyer's oath. And for the information of everyone, starting April 13, 2023, Allah, Thursday the 13th, binago po ng Korte Suprema ang lawyer's oath. This will now be the oath that uh, the new lawyers will take before they are admitted to the practice of law. Okay? Yan po, nakikita ninyo sa inyong screen. It's entirely different from the previous oath. At dito po, may respect ng Korte Suprema kasi na tinatanong ko sa mga sudyante ko, ano problema doon sa lawyer's oath? Eh, eh nakalagay, so help me God. What if you don't believe in God? We have to admit the fact that we respect religious freedom. The right to believe includes the right not to believe in God. So what about those who do not believe in God? They will just affirm. And they will not recite, so help me God. Because they do not believe in God. So it is more inclusive eh, than the previous one. At ito po ay first administered for historical purposes to the lawyers already by Associate Justice Marvick Leonen. Okay? Noon mismo, ah, noong uh, April 13, 2023 sa Manila Hotel. That's the historic moment when the new lawyers out was first administered. But to lawyers already. <laughs> Kasi pag non-lawyer, eh, baka maging abogado bigla. Eh? Ayan. And, ito po, ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, although ito referring to the old lawyer's oath, all lawyers must bear in mind that their oaths are neither mere words nor an empty formality. When they take their oath as lawyers, they dedicate their lives to the pursuit of justice. They accept the sacred trust to uphold the law of the land. Okay? Kaya kung titingnan ninyo yung lawyers o hindi nawawala yung field to the Constitution, to the laws of the land. We stress to Mr. Argosino, kung naalala nyo itong kaso ito, no? he was not admitted, the 
was not allowed to take the oath kasi merong hazing incident na may namatay at involved itong abogadong ito. According to the court, when he was finally allowed to take his oath, we stress to him that the lawyer's oath is not a mere ceremony or formality for practicing law. Every lawyer should at all times weigh his actions according to the sworn promises he makes when taking the lawyer's oath. Pag-abogado po tayo, hindi po tayo paasa. Ha? Hindi katulad ng mga iba na nangangako pero hindi tinupad. Ako, maraming kandidatong ganyan. Ano? Nangako, hindi naman tinupad. Kayo naman. Nangako na eh. Gusto nyo to pa rin pa. Pambihira naman. Nangako na eh. Huwag masyadong demanding. Ha? But if you are a lawyer, whatever you promise, you should deliver. Huwag tayong paasa. Kasi pagka may paasa, may nagkakasakit to. Ang sakit daw ay UTI. Ano yun? Umibig tapos iniwan. Umasa tapos inin dyan. Ako, mahirap yan. Ha? Masakit-sakit yan. <laughs> okay? Oh. Ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, the practice of law is a privilege. It's not a right. Granted only to those who possess the strict intellectual and moral qualifications required of lawyers who are instruments in the effective and efficient administration of justice. Grabe, no? Napakahirap pala maging abogado. At marami pong mga tao ang galit sa abogado. Familiar kayo dito. The first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. Diba? Galit sa mga abogado. Pero hindi nila alam na kung gusto nilang matinong relasyon, humanap sila ng abogado. Matino ang relasyon dyan. Bakit? Eh yung batas nga, inuunawa. Ikaw pa kaya? Oh, diba? Yung iba nga, ipinaglalaban. Eh yung puso mo pa. <laughs> Pero pagka si kompanyero ang nanliligaw, sabi niya, panyera, ikaw ba ang role number ko? Sabi niya, bakit? Eh nag-iisa ka lang at panghabang buhay ka. Yeah. Wala naman kayo ibang role number, hindi ba? <laughs> eh sabi niya, hindi eh. Eh ano, MCLE compliance number kita. Eh patay tayo dyan. Every three years pinapalitan niya eh. Kaya nga kayo nandito, magpapalit kayo ng compliance number eh. Di ba? Pero okay na po ako sa compliance number. Ayoko maging PTR number. Kasi every year pinapalitan yan. Eh? Delikado yan. Okay? So sabi nitong si Dick the Butcher, one of the characters of Shakespeare in his play, Henry VI, Act 1. The first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. It's rawful, mocking, it often expresses the ordinary person's frustration with the complexity of the law. Galito yung mga tao sa mga bagay na hindi na nauunawaan. Uh, they're afraid of things they do not know. And they hate things they cannot conquer. That's why many hate lawyers. Marami na ingit sa mga abogado. Bakit? Eh tayo, tingnan mo lang yung dokumento. Alam mo na kaagad eh. Di ba? May isa nagpagawa ng kontrata. Sabi ng abogado, 1,000 po. Attorney, wala pang 10 minutes nyo ginawa, 1,000. Eh oo oh, naman, hindi mo, hindi mo binabayaran yung 10 minutes. Ang binabayaran mo yung apat na taon na inaral ko. Kasi kung hindi ko yung inaral ng apat na taon, hindi ko yung magagawa in 10 minutes. Di ba? <laughs> eh, pero totoo, copy-paste nung pala. <laughs> Pinalitan lang yung pangalan. Okay. O, oh, liwanag. Now, contrary to popular belief, however, that proposal was not designed to restore sanity into commercial life. Rather, it was intended to eliminate those who might stand in the way of a contemplated revolution. Therefore, underscoring the important role that lawyers can play in the society. The surest way to chaos and tyranny even then was to remove the guardians of independent thinking. The lawyers. Therefore, it was really intended as a praise of the lawyer's role. Alam nyo, noong pa man, ito ho, ay fake news. Parang ambasador ng China lang yan. Ha? Kung ano-ano sinabi, tapos nung sinusog siya, misquoted. <laughs> Familiar, ano, natuto na sa Pilipinas. <laughs> Ang dami sinabi, pag sinususog mo na, misquoted lang. Pambihira. Ang sabi ni Finkelstein, an American uh, lawyer and author, sabi niya, ang proper rendition nito, ganito, if you do not want a contemplated revolution to happen, the first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. Eh kaya lang, bukas mag-aaralan natin sa legal writing kung kayo din ang attendees doon. Minsan kasi, ang naaalala ng tao, yung catchy, hindi yung buong premise. Kaya ang naalala nila, the first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. Galit sila sa mga abogado. Okay? Hindi nakuha yung buong concept o yung context. That's why, 
when I'm searching the internet, nakita ko ito. Here lies a lawyer for the last time. Hala, bakit naman? <laughs> Panghuli na talaga yan. Nakalagay doon sa kanyang epitaph. At meron pa nagsulat. When a lawyer dies, he has to be buried in a standing position. Bakit? Kulang na ba ang libingan? Hindi po. Kasi daw, he has been lying all his life. Huwag naman. Hindi naman siguro lahat. Ano? <laughs> eh, kasi ngayon, no, nakikita lahat sa Google. Eh. Wala kang maitatago. Eh. That's why, sabi nun, nanliligaw, Google ka ba? Ay, bakit? Eh, kasi natagpuan ko sa iyo lahat ng hinahanap ko. Ayan. Kaya sabi niya, Yahoo! <laughs> At sabi naman ng isa, nung nakilala kita, hindi na ako nag-Google pa. Sabi niya, bakit? Eh, kasi the search is over na. Ayan. Okay. So when we become lawyers, we enter into a corporate relationship. Hala, bakit ang dami nating karelasyon? Opo, ito yung lumang CPR. Luma kasi 1988 at pinalita na. It is a thing of the past. But just to reminisce, ito po, Canons 1 to 6, ay CPR, ng CPR, the lawyer and the society. Ganon yung arrangement eh. Canon 7 to 9, the lawyer and the legal profession. Canons 10 to 13, the lawyers and the courts. And finally, 14 to 22, the lawyer and the client. Yan po ang arrangement noon. However, nagkaroon po ng proposed code of professional responsibility and accountability. It was just a proposal, but on April 13, 2023, I was telling my students, huwag na natin aralin yung old CPR kasi aaralin na natin itong CPRA kasi ito na ang ipapatupad. And true enough, the other week, nagkaroon po ng launching sa Manila Hotel ng CPRA. Or sabi ni Chief Justice, CIPRA. Together with the new lawyer's oath na inadminister naman ni Associate Justice Marvick Leonen. Okay? So under this, ito po ang arrangement. Canon 1, independence. With only five sections. Okay, of course, may publication pa ho ito para mag-take effect. But we all know na effective na yan. No? Inaantay na lang natin yung completion ng publication. Canon 2, propriety. So, ang, kung mapapansin nyo, no? ipinattern na ito doon sa Code of Judicial Kanda. Na ganyan din ho yung mga canons. It has 46 sections naman. Diyan sa Canon 2. Canon 3, fidelity. 56 sections. OMG. May hirapan ng mga estudyante nito sa legal ethics. Napakarami memorize. Canon 4, competence and diligence. 10 sections. Canon 5, equality. 4 sections only. Pero, yung pong Canon 6, accountability, a 53 sections. Napakadami. And you have general provisions. So that is the arrangement and distribution of sections of the new Code of Professional Responsibility and Accountability. Wala na po yung propose, ha? Dahil inaprubahan na ito ng Supreme Court and Bank. Okay? And what is peculiar about this? What makes it different is Canon 2, Sections 38 to 46. The Responsible Use of Social Media. Kasi kahit mga abogado, kahit nga sino, ang daming ang, ang gagaling mag-advise sa Facebook eh. Kahit hindi abogado eh. <laughs> Dinedebate pa minsan yung abogado. Diba? Dahil sa social media, ang dami naging eksperto. Lalo na ho nung pandemic hanggang ngayon. Oh, nagbibigay ng legal advice, hindi naman pala abogado. Pambihira. But Justice Leonen had a warning. Reminder to all lawyers. Sabi niya, lawyers are bound by strictest confidentiality to the client. Is strictest, ha? Posting messages of clients. Pleadings made for them. Showing the documents being prepared. Anything about the client at all is a violation of the attorney-client privilege. And that issue has been addressed already by the new Code of Professional Responsibility and accountability. Another provision that is new at being objected to by some, hindi naman lahat, by some, ito ho, Canon 3, Section 15. Huh? That a lawyer shall not have 
dating, romantic, or sexual relations with a client. Bakit naman? <laughs> joke lang, oh, joke lang. <laughs> during the engagement. During, ano po? Unless the consensual relationship existed between them before the lawyer-client relationship commenced. Ay, hindi mo pwedeng juwain ang kliyente mo. Juwain mo muna bago mo gawin kliyente. Di ba? Well, siguro may reason naman no ito bakit ganyan. Ha? Kaya kung sa tingin mo nagugustuhan mo, huwag mo nang gawing kliyente para hindi ka mamroblema sa CPRA. Ha? Kasi magkakaproblema ho tayo dyan. Okay? Mahirap po yan. <laughs> na ginojowa ang client. <laughs> ito yung mga millennials eh. Mas pigbit ba ito? Ay sa amin no, na mga professional teachers, kasi oh, Uh, I am a licensed teacher, may code of ethics din kami. Ang nakalagay doon sa section 7 of article 80, ikumpara natin, ano? In a situation where mutual attraction and subsequent love develop between teacher and learner, OMG, pwede the teacher shall exercise utmost professional discretion to avoid scandal, positive and preferential treatment of the learner. Bakit yung teacher pinapayagan juwain ng estudyante? Pero yung kliyente, bakit yung juwain ni atorni? Ay ito, alam nyo, parang hindi abogado ang gumawa nito eh. eh. Wala lang akong time para pagreklamo sa PRC. Kasi pag ginawa ni teacher yan, ay mamamroblema si teacher ng child abuse. Hindi lang sexual harassment. Kasi ho, ang mga covered ng Code of, Professional Response, uh, Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers ay sa basic education. Below 18 years old yan. Ay, hindi pwedeng magbigay ng consent ang 18 year ang below 18. Remember that case of Malto versus People of the Philippines? Yung professor sa isang exclusive school for girls sa Makati, ginawa niyang girlfriend yung kanyang estudyante, 17 years old. Ala, ay eh, convicted ho for child abuse eh. Committed through sexual abuse. Kaya mo mong problema ang mga teachers dito. Marami na pong dumulog sa atin na ganyan ang problema. Kung nakasabi ko, eh, hiwalayan mo kasi below 18 yan. No excuse yan. E kaya lang po, alam nyo, ang sabi ni Blaise Pascal, the, hearts, the heart has its reasons. Which reason does not know? Diba? May mga katwiran ng puso na hindi maarok ng katwiran. Oh. At ito po ay kinote ng Korte Suprema in that much quoted decision. Eh? Wala po kinalaman yung picture. Ano? Chua versus Clave. If the two eventually fell in love, Despite the disparity in their ages and academic levels, this only lends substance to, to the truism that the heart has reasons of its own, which reason does not know. But definitely yielding to this gentle and universal emotion is not to be so casually equated with immorality. The deviation of the circumstances of their marriage from the usual societal pattern cannot be considered as a defiance of contemporary social mores. Di ba? Pati ba naman pagpinting ng puso, pangihimasukan pa? Eh, sa mga abogado, pinangihimasukan po yun. <laughs> Kaya huwag jojowain ang client, ha? Ulitin natin. Huwag jojowain ang kliyente. <laughs> Jowa niyo muna ba yung kliyente? Ano? Mm. Now, we have an obligation to the court. Ito hindi naman po ito nagbago. In fact, nasa canon one po ito eh. Eh? That a lawyer as an officer of the court, he is a vital instrumentality in the administration of justice. And according to the court, they are to abstain from offensive or menacing language or behavior before the court and must refrain from attributing to a judge motives that are not supported by the record or have no materiality to the case. There are lawyers na pag natalo, ang sinisisi si judge para maging pogi siya sa kliyente. Bad yun. <laughs> diba? Kung talo, talo, ipaliwanag. Bakit na talo? May remedyo naman eh. But do not blame the judge. Okay? Deal with fellow lawyer. With candor, fairness, courtesy, and truthfulness. And do not encroach in the business of another lawyer. Yan po ay nakalagay na rin doon sa CPRA. di ba? Ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, lawyers must not encroach on another lawyer's business. Using Rule 8.02, i-adjust na lang natin later on yan kasi nandun din naman yan eh, sa CPRA. 
The court emphasized that settled is the rule that a lawyer should not steal another lawyer's client nor induce the latter to retain him by a promise of better service, good result, or reduced fees. Ano ito? Nakikipag-bargain ukay-ukay para makakuha ng kliyente o sababa ang charge niya? Ay bawal mo yan. Pinagbabawal lang tayo ng predatory pricing. Ha? Mm. That's why it has been a habit oh, since, I, since I started practicing in 2005 that if a client would come to me for the first time, the first question I ask, do you have a lawyer? Pag sinabing yes, the only advice I could give you is to go back to your lawyer. That's it. Why? If I give you an advice, I am interfering in your client-attorney relationship. Remember, highly fiduciary. Based on complete trust and confidence. If you do not trust your lawyer, terminate the services. Pero huwag kang magtataksil. Huh? Para kung pagpapakasal ang pagkuha ng abogado. Stick to one lang. Hindi po pwede yung may abogado ka, nagkukonsulta ka sa iba. Hindi pwede yun. That's, why, that's the only advice I could give you. Go back to your lawyer. If you cannot settle matters, then that's time for you to decide. Okay? But, but I'm not insinuating anything. You go back to your lawyer. Kung wala kang abogado, sa akin tayo entertain. Why? I cannot encroach on the business of a fellow lawyer. But the camaraderie among them is not proof of conspiracy, but a sign of brotherhood among them. And that's one of the fourfold duties of a lawyer, his duty to the bar. We are all members of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines. But what is the IBP really? It is a sui generis institution created by law. Presidential Decree 189, May 4, 1973. Yes, a May 4, 2023, 50 years old na po ang IBP. But the 50th uh, National Conference had been held already last February ba? in Davao City. Ayan. Hindi tayo naka-attend kasi hindi tayo lecturer. <laughs> okay, magastos eh. So IBP is a sui generis institution. Deliberately organized by both the legislative, but we have to remember na Hindi naman talaga legislative yan kasi presidential decree. It was during the time of President Ferdinand Marcos, yung tatay, ano po, that he issued PD-189. And judicial branches of the government, of course, recognized ito ng Korte Suprema and the past and present constitution for the advancement of the legal profession. Therefore, IBP commissioners being officers of the IBP are private practitioners performing public functions Delegated to them by the Supreme Court in the exercise of its constitutional power to regulate the practice of law, as what we have seen earlier in the discussion. Therefore, IBP officers are not public officers. Okay? They have delegated function of entertaining complaints against lawyers, particularly the Commission on Bar Discipline. Publican in nature, but the responsible officer performing such function is a private individual, not a public officer. Anong issue dito? Ito bang mga official ng, uh, ng IBP together with the officers of the CBD, Commission on Bar Discipline, are they required to file their sal in? Alam naman nun natin, under Republic Act 6713, lahat ng public officers are required to file their sal in. Okay? At marami na po ang nagka-problema dahil sa salen. Mali kasi ang definition eh. Ano ba yung salen? Sekreto ang laman nito. Hala? Mali. <laughs> Sidelines at lagay namin. Sa akin lahat na kapangalan. Ay hindi po. Statement of assets, liabilities, and network. Okay? So pagka ikaw ay IBP officer, hindi ka, po, hindi ka required na mag-file ng salen. Because you are not a public officer. Okay, so ang dami na nagka-problema dyan. Umpisa natin kay President Erap Estrada. Di ba? Na yung Holy Week, ayaw na ayaw niya. Bakit? Ayaw ni Erap ang Holy Week. Kasi nagsisimula po Domingo de Ramos. At natatapos Sabado de Gloria. Wala man lang Joseph Easter Rada. <laughs> okay. So, ay meron na lang Easter, ano? Hmm. Ayan. Sumunod si Jesus Corona. And finally, Jesse Sereno. Pero hindi na-impeach si Jesse Sereno. No? 
nakuha ran to. Republic versus Sereno. Ano ang problema ng tatlong ito? Sal N. Okay? Nako, kaya ako nag uh, kuan kayo ha? kung gusto niyo mapunta sa korte, okay, maging presidente, magfile na ng Sal N, ang tama. Ha? <laughs> okay. We have a duty to the client. Inter devotion to the client's interest. Huwag uuwi sa bahay ng kliyente. Mamo problema kayo. It is a fiduciary relationship. Complete trust and confidence. So paan naging complete yung trust and confidence mo kung kumukonsulta ka pa sa ibang abogado? Di ba? Ako man yung abogado mo at kukonsulta ka sa iba, pababayaan na kita. Ang sasabihin ko na lang, tayo'y pinagtagpo, ngunit hindi itinadhana. Okay? <laughs> Pero hindi kita igugusta. Mag-withdraw ako. <laughs> In the case of Freeman versus Reyes, pera po ang involved dito. Ha? Kung nabasa niyo itong kasong ito, lady lawyer po ito, in-engage services niya ni Mrs. Freeman kasi namatay yung asawa sa London. British yung asawa. Pilipina itong si Mrs. Freeman. Wala pala siyang British visa. So nagpatulong. Eh, then usually, uh, umingi ng acceptance fee, hindi nakakuha ng visa. May sabi niya, bigla mo uli ako ng 46,000. Para saan po yung 46,000? Grease money. Hala, nagalit na siyempre ang Supreme Court yan. Pero hindi pa doon nagtapos. Okay? Yan. Don't worry po, magkakaroon tayo ng break may amayang konti. Eh? Hindi pa niya nagtapos. Hindi pa rin nakuha ng visa despite the grease money that was given. Ang ginawa, sabi niya, pupunta ako ng London. Doon ko aasikasuhin ng visa mo. Pamasayahan mo ako, accommodation, etc. Pumayag pa rin si Ms. Freeman at binigyan pa siya ng special power of attorney to collect the insurance proceeds of the deceased husband. Ang problema, ito, number one, yung pagpunta niya sa London is not really to help the client get a visa. Kasi alam naman natin, pare-pareho hindi kailangan magpunta sa London para makakuha ng British visa, eh, di ba? Sa embassy lang yan eh. The purpose of going to London was to attend an international law convention at the expense of the client. OMG. And then, may dalagal ang special power of attorney na collect yung insurance proceeds. Pinatanong ni Ms. Prima na saan na po yung insurance proceeds? Ay wala pa. Ah, doon na nagalit yung Ms. Prima. So, she engaged another lawyer at pinadisbar itong si Attorney Reyes. And it was found out na sa bangko niya pala yung 10,000 plus pounds proceeds of the insurance. So, she was disbarred. Babae po ito, no? Ang sabi ng Korte Suprema, she had, you had the goal to take advantage of your client who at the time was grieving for the loss of her husband. ba? Diba? Kasi nga, pagpunta sa London eh, a-attend ng conference, inabuso mo yung kliyente mo. Huwag ba nun? Okay? And we have the duty to the public. Be part of the solution. Don't be part of the problem. Because lawyers are at all times Subject to the watchful eye and community approbation. Needless to state that those who stand up both public and private fail this scrutiny have to be disciplined and after appropriate proceedings accordingly penalized.